Hello and welcome to the Indian series of Drishti Eyes. My name is Pooja Devi. Today we are going to discuss about a request or a demand from the Apex Court about a project like the Project Tiger for Great Indian Mustard. We are going to talk about that only. From the perspective of films as well as from the perspective of GS Mains Paper 3rd, it is important that we understand this segment. And these are the many topics that we are going to discuss step by step. So please pay attention closely to it. Supreme Court floats idea of project Great Indian Mustard. What is this endangered bird? We will talk about that. So many of you must have read about the Great Indian Mustard. Let us briefly discuss it. With respect to the common name about this bird, it is Great Indian Mustard. The scientific name is Ardiotis nigriset. So you can understand it uh, if a prelims question is asked you can answer this now height is 100 centimeters or 1 centimeter length wingspan of 210 to 250 centimeter and it weighs 15 to 18 kgs if we talk about the IUCN red list it is critically endangered okay remember this fact also it is scheduled in the schedule one of the Indian Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 in the CMS convention in and in appendix first of the uh, PITES as well. Okay, it has also been identified as one of the species for the recovery program. So these are the many uh, important aspects that films could ask. This is also the state bird of Rajasthan. Moving ahead now, let's talk about very factual information about the Great Indian Mustard. The Great Indian Mustard is very is a very special bird. We can say, and it has a black crown on the forehead, which makes it very distinguished. It also has a contrasting pale neck as well as head. The body is brownish and the wings are marked with black, brown and grey and the upper plumage is roughed. It is finely penciled with black. So it's a very beautiful bird. It has a long neck and long bare legs. It is similar to an ostrich and males and females generally grow to the same height and weight but males have a larger black crown. So remember this prelims fact and a black band across the breast. So this could be asked in prelims. Now it lives. Where does it live? The habitat, it lives on only on short grass plains, avoiding thick, shrubby and wood landscape, which makes the uh, the species very prone to attacks. Okay, a male bird lives for about 15 years and a female for 12 years. So the time span is pretty short as well. Moving ahead now, if we talk about uh, the breeding season, they breed mostly during the monsoon and the females lay only one egg, egg. So that is a concern. That is why their species are declining. Males although play no role when it comes to incubation and care of the children, it all depends on the female. And these birds are opportunist eaters, they are omnivores. They can live on seasonal availability of food, they can eat grass seeds, they can eat insects like grasshoppers and beetles and also sometimes small rodents and reptiles. So it is omnivorous. It is known for its very magnificent courtship dance. So all around the world, there are 23 species of bustard. And Four are found in India, opt out 23. The Great Indian Bustard, Ardiotis nigriceps, the Hobara Bustard, that is Clamidotis undulata, the Lesser Floricid, Typhiotide indica, and the Bengal Floricid, Hobaropis bengalensis. Okay, and initially, if we talk about decades ago, uh, when it, uh, when India was thriving with the population, initially there were they were found in 16 states. Now, the last census which was conducted to count them in 2018, they counted that only 150, less than 150 individuals in the wild remain and out of which 122 were in Jaisalmer, okay, Rajasthan. And right now what the experts are saying that it is even less than 100 when we talk in the wild. So, Rajasthan has the biggest population of it. Some are also found in Gujarat, Andhra Pradesh, Karnataka and Maharashtra and in 1994, this particular species was put in the list of the IUCN. Moving ahead now, if we talk about why they are endangered because of threats that they are surrounded with. First of all, they are very threatened with overhead power transmission lines. Because they have very poor frontal vision, they cannot sight the presence of the overlying electric wires. And when they sight it, it becomes impossible for such a heavy bird to change course. So they collide with it. So collision is a problem. According to the Wildlife Institute of India in Rajasthan, 18 
great indian bustards die every year after colliding with the high tension power lines then hunting is another problem in pakistan if we talk about hunting is still prevalent in india now it is controlled but occasional poaching outside protected areas are a problem apart from that the free ranging dogs in the villages also pose a threat to their presence and the presence of their eggs habitat loss and alteration as a result of widespread agricultural expansion and industrial activities also are another problem because that destroys the habitat of it infrastructural development such as irrigation roads electric poles mining everything poses a threat to their habitat so when there is no ecosystem of course their habitat is destroyed and their species will you know have a challenge of development then if we talk about why do we need to you know uh, protect these species because it's an umbrella species of the indian grassland system an umbrella species is a species if you conserve that species every other species will get conserved along with it and it's a it's the best indicator species of the health of the grassland area if we have to know about the health of the grassland we can rely on the number of gibs present it is also known as the friend of the farmer because it protects the crop the farmers uh, which uh, of course uh, of course they are a friend because they protect the crops from different invaders moving ahead now if we talk about the conservation effort conservation effort we of course have to see a species recovery program this particular species or bird is under this and the species recovery program is under the integrated development integrated development of habitats which is floated by the ministry of environment forest and climate change now other another one is national bustard recovery plans and conservation breeding facility which has been provided in rajasthan and many other states apart from that project great indian bustard which was um, launched by rajasthan on 5th of june 2013 ensures that they recover the species for that desert national park also was uh, you know um, in rajasthan was designated as breeding grounds for it and eco friendly measures such as what crops to grow why they should not be hunted the awareness with respect to their breeding season and of course taking care of high power tension lines these uh, are also very important in understanding and conserving the ecosystem of great indian bustard now if we talk about what has the apex court said now apex court was hearing certain petitions with respect to having a project like the project tiger for great indian bustard as well so the court asked if project gib could be launched on the similar lines the bench of cgi cgi of india of course chief justice of india dy chandrachur justice as bopanna and justice v rama subramanian the bench was hearing the petitions now in april 2021 the apex court ordered the power firms in rajasthan as well as gujarat to lay underground wiring so that collision does not happen and also to install install diverters on the existing lines in the region however it was seen according to a report that the diverters have not been yet installed so that's a problem now the court has also directed the chief secretaries of gujarat and rajasthan to assess the total length of transmission lines and the estimated number of bird diverters in uh, in the gibs priority habitats within 4 weeks it has also ordered the formation of three member committee in which persons representing wildlife institute of india union ministry of new and renewable energy and corbett foundation which is a non profit agency has been provided so that what are the technicalities of uh, you know diverters and um, the underground uh, wiring of the high tension power lines what to do with them this particular committee will look, look into that okay now if we talk about the prelims question this is the question that you have to solve consider the following statements regarding the great indian bustard they are present in indian subcontinent and africa they are critically endangered species they lack frontal vision due to this they cannot detect power lines ahead of them from far so you have to tell me how many statements are correct okay so that's it thank you so much for watching and stay updated